what about me? I uh, I'm coming from Saint Petersburg. I moved to, to Finland uh, more than six years ago, and I've been working here in Vincent for three and a half years now. And for the last couple of years, I've been working uh, mainly with startups, and uh, all of those startups had closure and closure script uh, apps. So I thought that I could share my experience and uh, tell you more details about the possibilities that Clojure and GraphQL are carrying. And currently, the project that I'm uh, running has uh, Clojure and GraphQL integration. So it might be interesting for you. So first, I'm going to talk a bit about Clojure. Uh, how many of you guys, by the way, know uh, what Clojure is, have some experience except you, because you have Clojure t-shirt. <laughs> Two. You do have experience. You know what is Clojure. Right. Uh, then I'm going to dive deeper to Clojure and GraphQL stack, and I will uh, show in more details uh, Two interesting libraries, Lacinia for backend and Venia for frontend. What was that? Bing. That was me. All right. <laughs> so do I have Sorry. some hallucinations? Or... <laughs> so uh, Clojure is a modern Lisp dialect running on the GVM, uh, which has own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, for those who are coming from Java background, uh, they can be pleased that you can use Java. Uh, quite handy from Clojure as it has great Java interop. But however, I have actually never used any Java libraries because Clojure's ecosystem is just amazing. You can find anything you need from there. Uh, of course, many people complain that uh, Clojure startup time is really slow. And yeah, that's true. It can take up to a minute to start up the REPL, uh, REPL run, evaluate, print loop. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, it can be mitigated quite easily with the REPL development. So with REPL development means that you can test your functions, you can call your functions straight away from the REPL. Uh, you don't need to restart anything. And if you're running an app in the, in the development uh, environment, you can restart the whole app without, you can update the app if you move, if you change something in the code uh, in a matter of seconds, and you don't need to restart the whole server, the whole app. Uh, the main concept of Clojure is immutable data, and it is really everywhere. Uh, functions are data, inputs are data, outputs are data, configs are data, uh, even DOM components, uh, if you're working with the front end, are data. And it's really important concept to grasp, because uh, if we think about um, the app development, uh, what do we do? We actually store some data in the back end, then the client calls for some data. You get the data from the back end, you process the data, modify it somehow, and give it back to, to the front end client, and then it shows it to the customer. So uh, it is all about the data nowadays when we are uh, programming. So Clojure is really good at supporting that, and many people call uh, programming Clojure as that data-driven uh, development. Um, and also the data is immutable, which means that once uh, the data is defined, once the object is defined, it's never going to move. Uh, it's never going to change. Uh, also, pure functions, as in any functional programming language, uh, mean that uh, no matter, uh, it means that if you have the same input, uh, every time you're going to have the same output, no matter uh, what. So there is no side effects that are changing the uh, way how the function uh, handles the data that you uh, supply to it. And for the front end, there's Clojure script, which is basically Clojure for the front end, uh, which is compiled to JavaScript. Uh, I have to admit that many developers are really scared of Clojure. And when you mention Clojure to them, they really get like, oh, there's, there's thousands of parents on the one, on the single row. Uh, oh, that's really scary. I don't want to do anything that I don't understand anything. Uh, it's not true. In my opinion, the code of unexperienced Clojure developments can be scary. Uh, if you look 
here for the example to the example of the uh, from the uh, community driven closure style guide and if you check this second second row which is commented with not as good I bet you won't be able to really understand what is happening here because it's yeah it's really messed up and it's really uh, hard to grasp uh, but if you look for the first row uh, you even if you don't know what this dash and arrow is doing it's thread first macro uh, you can clearly get a the uh, context of what is happening here so we have the vector of three numbers you reverse them and then you add their new number and then you print the result so the same goes with the for the second for the second example and this is the thing about closure uh, what I really like if you really understand if you really get the idea of closure then you're able to write highly declarative very readable and easy to understand code even for those people who have no experience with closure in a couple of my projects actually uh, I was working with people who had no closure experience prior to the project and in three days they were already committing uh, new features to the to the product uh, many people say that the learning curve is really huge for closure but I really disagree with that based on my own experience and closure in the wild these are some companies that are using closure in production I think not bad there's even Boeing that have some in-flight system uh, which is not mission critical but anyways it's really nice that there's closure somewhere in the air as well so if we are now coming back to the main topic of this meetup to the GraphQL uh, let's imagine that we want to develop new amazing mobile first app uh, web app or why not react uh, why not native app uh, with the closure and GraphQL so I would like to present my opinion on the most appropriate and the best fit stack for for this and well don't forget that it's anyway my opinion and there's a lot of libraries available so if you once try to to use closure and GraphQL you can uh, choose your own instruments but anyway this would be my to go solution uh, so for the front end uh, where we have our fancy uh, web app we have closure script spec and I will uh, explain what are those libraries and what are they doing in next slides uh, spec reg and three frame venia and maybe if we use in react native then uh, some react native stuff and on the back end where we have our GraphQL endpoint and business logic uh, we have closure spec Kekkonen and, and Lasinia uh, those are the main building blocks uh, the main libraries of course there's also some supply uh, some uh, utility libraries that you might need but these are the core so on the back end there is a uh, spec which uh, this library specifies the structure of the data uh, it handles the data validation and data destructuring and also it allows to generate data based on the spec or you might call it schema if it's easy to understand uh Kekkonen, which is quite funny name is a um, data-driven uh, library for creating and consuming remote services integrated with swagger uh, it is highly configurable and very flexible it has such things as contacts and interceptors so you can put in context every third-party services for example what you need to have or some extra data what you need to have when you get the uh, request from the client so for example if uh, you need to check if the mm, request is authorized you can uh, intercept the request before it really comes to the handler and uh, uh, get the GVT token from from the request and resolve the user and then put it to the context and all the handlers that are handling the request they already know who the user is and they have all the user details Lasinia is the uh, GraphQL engine 
uh, it is uh, backend agnostic and it's actually just a contract between the uh, GraphQL uh, client and your application data. And Lysenia is developed by Walmart and uh, the first time when I heard about it was on the Clojure conference a couple months ago. There was a great talk about, about Lysenia by the Walmart developer. Uh, you can Google it and or YouTube it. It's quite interesting talk. And what goes to the, for the front end, there is also spec, the script. Then there is reagent, which is a minimalistic React uh, implementation for Clojure script, uh, where you are free of any boilerplate. You just have Clojure data, and you define the React components by using Clojure data. The reframe is the reactive state management, kind of same as Flux in JavaScript, uh, with, where you define the data flow between your components and the global state by uh, defining handlers, uh, subscribers, uh, and stuff like that. And Venia is the library for GraphQL query generation from, from the Clojure data. Uh, so let's now discuss in further detail Lysenia and Venia because they are the, the core blocks for the GraphQL. So uh, Lysenia basically consists of uh, four building blocks, uh, schema uh, definition, which is an EDN file, extensible data notation, it means, uh, where you define all your objects. So as we've seen in the previous Ivan's talk, he was referring to the Star Wars schema. So this is the part of the Star Wars schema uh, where you have the objects droid, human, and some enums as well. And uh, also you define in the schema queries. Uh, here's, here are two queries. Uh, and as Ivan also mentioned uh, to, in the answer to the question about um, implementations of GraphQL in the back end, here are the resolvers. So you're saying to the, uh, you're defining the resolver, or you you're actually referencing to the re to resolver's name in the schema. That will be uh, at this stage when you're getting the schema file and you compile it, it will be uh, attached to the schema. So here you're attaching the resolvers, which are functions, to your schema. Then you define the endpoint. So here's uh, Kekkonen endpoint where you have which accepts uh, post request with two parameters query and variables. Uh, query is string in the GraphQL request, it just concatenates to, to a single string. Um, and then you're just defining the resolvers. So here's the it's actually the screenshots from the uh, documentation of Lasinia. Uh, here you're defining the logic. Uh, behind the get hero resolver. So it can be anything. You can get the data from the database, or you can consume some third party service, uh, or you can combine them both, or you can just gen generate some dummy data and return it. You can use cache uh, or whatever you want. So the thing about the GraphQL that it really doesn't care about your backend implementations because it is just the contract. Here you say, here's my schema, schema, and here are the functions that are uh, used to resolve the data in your request. Uh, it's develop developer's uh, task to define how the data is fetched and how it's processed. But the Lacinia is handling the rest, as Ivan just told in, the, in his, in his uh, presentation. So that's basically it for, for the backend implementation. And, uh, I think here's endless possibilities uh, in Clojure and GraphQL mm, combination because schema here is just the data. You can do anything with it. You can combine uh, schemas from different sources. You can have, uh, you can split the schema for, for example, if you have a very complex app and you have different domains there, you can split the schema in different domains and then just combine them at the moment when you're compiling it. <coughs> or uh, you can uh, generate the schema from PostgreSQL, PostgreSQL 
database and actually I didn't know that this postgres GraphQL is already existing so it's really nice um, and that's great because PostgreSQL really offers possibilities for that uh, schema generation and what else Lacinia has already implemented asynchronous query processing so if you're fetching the data from multiple third-party services and you can uh, synchronize them by waiting for the response from the first service uh, and then getting from the future response the uh, data you can attach it to the to the data of the other call to the other third-party service and if they're dependent on each other then you can just uh, synchronize them that they are executed consequently with the required data and Lacinia is uh, production ready is well it's 0 0.17 the version right now but it's been running in the Walmart uh, production apps uh, for a while now and so far it, it looks really nice and for the front end there's the Venia actually I made the library myself uh, because when I got excited about the GraphQL and I wanted to try it uh, before the new project started I I found quite fast Lacinia but then I googled the front-end solutions for uh, queer for GraphQL I said there is nothing for closure script there was one library which uh, uses GraphQL files so basically you have uh, folder with the plenty of GraphQL files you don't necessarily get the syntax highlighting in your uh, in your editor if you're using it with Clojure or maybe you do get but anyway I thought that well Clojure is about data and I don't want to uh, depend to be dependent on the uh, text files that are laying somewhere else so the GraphQL queries on the front end should be generated from the data this is the, the whole point of Clojure and Clojure script so uh, I started to write this library and I think it's it's now in a quite quite good state it's 0 0.2 uh, the version right now uh, doesn't have pretty much commits so far I didn't have uh, so much time to devote for that but mm, it already has, supports the basic functionality and almost uh, the most important uh, parts of the GraphQL specification. So here you define the query, which looks like this, which is a valid GraphQL query where you have variables and uh, you use variables as the arguments to query and aliases and fragments, uh, and they are all defined in quite simple, quite simple map where you specify the operation name, operation type, uh, variables, and then referencing to them in your query, uh, which supports also nested fields, as you can see here. And I think it looks really neat, and for Project Script app, it's a really good addition. Uh, anyway, it is still a work in progress. Uh, and I hope I will be able in the future well maybe not during my holiday we start soon but after that to advance with it and is to have the full GraphQL specification support uh, with mutations as well then the introspection support would be nice so that you that when you're uh, writing a query or when you're trying to call the query it will actually it could actually tell you uh, if you have some invalid invalid data there in the query that is not in the schema uh, so that you can get some real-time error handling or something like that that would be really nice and I would really like to also make some library for creating relay components where uh, you define a react component and you just tell uh, you, you just give the this kind of object to it the map with the query and then it uh, fetches to that data itself and then it updates it to the global state and the data is available at any time for any other components 
and then it synchronizes it with the state and I think it would be really really fun thing to do uh, yes mm. I think that's it for the main part uh, so the name was the beast and the beauty so I leave it up for you to decide what is the beast here and what is the beauty but I think actually myself that closure could be the beast because people are so scared of it.